Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Tame Your Life Challenge. Here in my quarantine in Hong Kong, I am checking in for episode four. <laughs> Who we? Can't believe it's only been four days. I'm still jet lagged, waking up at 3:30 a.m. I've been wandering back and forth from the door to the window. Aimlessly, just trying to clear my mind and be present. It's definitely a bit claustrophobic in here, not gonna lie, as I don't have much sunshine or fresh air. My body's starting to feel a little tired, not due to rest, but due to lack of movement. I have a yoga mat and some TRX equipment and some bands, but haven't been able to get any, definitely not the 10,000 steps a day here. It is 4.30, 4.45 a.m. Tuesday morning in Hong Kong, and I, am, I slept pretty well actually. I'm having some strange dreams as I continue to embark on this detox into setting myself free from pain body and old habits and addictions that have crippled me for far too long. And I'm noticing my dreams come back very vividly. Strange dreams. My body feels very nice. I've been alkalizing every day, exercising every day, meditating every day, reading every day, and writing every day day to align with the 21 day tame your life challenge which after just a few days has already made me feel much more clear and calm and at peace with where I am and the goals I want to accomplish. Sometimes you have to just slow everything down, quiet the mind, reconnect back to your heart in order to remember It's hard in this day and age when we are constantly consumed, sucked into screens, whether you're learning or whether you're working, it seems like the screen has taken over our society. And for those of you watching right now, you're watching on a screen. So slowing everything down, coming back to your heart, it's a nice practice practice because it allows you to reattune to your center, not your head, not your physical body and all the discomforts and challenges, just your heart. So breathe deeply into your heart. As you exhale, just slow everything down. ironic actually is right now in this moment Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp the three leading social media tech giants of the world are all down I wonder what life would be like if they just stayed down I mean it would cause so much chaos because of the amount of people that rely on it every day for business and it would also disrupt so many people's lives because of how how addicted to our social media and our notifications we are myself included I check it every day but just go back to a time for those of you who <laughs> for those of you who uh, remember what life was like before social media what were we occupying our days with? What are we doing instead of constantly checking our newsfeed and constantly posting content and constantly making you know, little bits of you know, sharing our sharing the glamour and the, and the glory of our life? What would life be like for a day if we were to slow everything down, 
disconnect from technology and just remember the importance of the connection to ourself, connection to others, and our connection to God. An interesting conversation as right now <laughs> all the social media platforms are pretty much out except for Twitter. Log on to Twitter right now, it's hilarious. They're trolling everybody. <laughs> Literally, hello everybody <laughs> on Twitter right now. Uh, yesterday was a good day actually. It was it was there's so much beauty that came from yesterday. First of all, getting into just a solid routine and a system of creating content really makes me happy. Remember, I don't do this for you guys. I do this for me. This is to set myself free from my thoughts and my emotions and to just allow me to step into a stage and onto a platform that allows me to serve in any way. Whether it inspires you or not, up to you. If it motivates you or not, great. Or not. If you can't stand listening <laughs> and hearing my voice, totally okay too. Happy you're gonna love me, happy you're gonna hate me, and I fully accept that. But the point I'm making is, man, what a wonderful way for, um, what, a, what a wonderful time it's been for me to build a system around how I create, edit, fine tune, and distribute content, and then track to see what's working. Uh, because I'm Definitely, definitely gonna keep doing this. This is not just a yay, tamer in quarantine, doing a bunch of videos. This is gonna be my new way of work. And I'm really excited about it because it'll allow me to create and to connect to people all over the world. It'll allow me to continue to nurture my passions of inspiring people towards greater health and well-being, a variety of coaching and wellness topics. But it also allows me to step out of my comfort zone and be really vulnerable to camera and just get real, right? I will be the first to admit that for the past, probably since I started posting content on Instagram, oh, that probably, what, seven, eight, nine years ago? I don't know. Maybe more, maybe 10 years ago. I've only showed the happy butterflies and rainbows and, and, the rose, the rose uh, lensed glasses look in my life. I have hid so much of of the truth of what was happening because that's what you do on social media, or that's what I thought you did. You just post how awesome you are, where you're traveling, all the achievements you're doing, the people that the people that you're connecting to, the food you're eating, <laughs> the fun exciting moments of life. However, that, though that's very, it's good to share because there is some value in that. There's an equal and opposite reaction. To every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And to every non-action, meaning not sharing the truth, not sharing what's real, not sharing the the dirt and the darkness and the shadow. Guys, you can hold it against me if you will. However, by doing so, by going into that space, and by allowing myself to be vulnerable, it gives me a massive amount of power. Power within myself to be able to speak freely, articulate clearly, express my thoughts and my emotions more, uh, that, that are more authentic. And if there's one thing I'm really committed to when it comes to creating this content and just letting it pour through me, it is to start from now on stepping up in a more authentic, in the most authentic way, in the most real way, showing you that not just the beauty of all that I'm creating and all that's happening, but also the behind the scenes look at all the challenges and the struggle and the, the realness. And that I had neglected for so long because I was afraid, fear, of how it would, people would perceive me. I was afraid of what people would think. Thank you, thank you God for that awakening. And the fear of what people think about you can actually lead you into places darker than by just accepting the fact that you're not perfect and you never will be. I'm not perfect and I never will be. So how can we create more conversation around 
embracing our imperfections and allowing and, and holding a space to be vulnerable and to share stories that are real and authentic, not the sugar-coated stories of life where a lot of us tend to live. I tend to, I, I tend to like living there too. It's, it's joyful. However, what's the opposite of that is, is the sorrow and the struggle and the sadness and the reality. So I hope that by me opening up and just pouring into camera this just vulnerable narrative of me <laughs> in my pajamas in a hotel, pretty much a glorified hotel jail where I'm out and I'm having pimples pop and my skin's not as healthy and I'm just the real raw look at me without any filters. I hope that by doing so it could perhaps rub off onto some of you guys to can, to find a space within yourself to connect to vulnerability. And perhaps that's the topic, is embrace your own imperfections and embrace being vulnerable. You don't have to share it. I'm not saying everybody has to, you know, you have to, you, have to, you don't have to record yourself on camera speaking words about all your struggles and your realness like I'm doing now. But whatever it is within you that you can embrace in terms of your imperfections, the, the, the shadow or your pain body, as well as getting really real and vulnerable with yourself, I am a true believer that that leads to not only more self-empowerment, but it also gives you a tremendous amount of, of awareness of perhaps work that you need to do, right? How thoughts lead to these emotional reactions that then causes us into either some form of, of taking a step back and considering the outcome, finding an intelligent response, or you know, an emotional pour out the fire freak out. So do your best, you know? It's not easy. And it's not for the faint of heart. Doing the deep work is hard. It's a full-time job. I find myself every single day here being bombarded with thoughts from the past, being slammed with emotions and experiences, especially being in Hong Kong, where this place has been home to me for so long, and countless relationships here, and so many people that I've become so fond of in this city, and so many memories, a whole chapter of my life, and I can't help but think about, you know, think about family and friends, think about how life used to be back then, think about where I used to live and what I used to do and all, all of that. Uh, and I share that very openly because I hope that by doing so you can also embrace these three things. Number one, slow everything down, attune to your heart and embrace your vulnerability. Number two, Accept the fact that you're not perfect and you never will be. None of us are perfect and there's nothing sexy about perfection. Just embrace what makes you imperfect and that's actually what makes you interesting. And then number three, having the courage to go deep. Go deep into what thoughts lead to emotional reactions that cause you to have discomfort. And by doing so, hopefully it'll help you tame a new aspect of your life. Being very vulnerable again for just a moment, guys, I am really excited to share with you that I've been using this app inspired by inspired by my uncle called No Mo. For any friends or family out there who are also, or people who are watching who are also in recovery, I highly encourage you to get this app called No Mo and uh, download it because what it does is it's basically just it's a it's a it's a sobriety clock and so what it allows you to do is it allows you to punch in the day that you you made it a must to no longer whatever in my case it was alcoholism no more drinking and it tracks every single day you have the hour minute all the way down to the second and here it is boom no mo to load. Hi, 
I am on day, boom, 21. Three weeks, not a drop. <laughs> and I feel better than ever. I feel more connected to myself than ever. I feel more clear than ever. And if you're somebody that's on your path right now towards a healthier way of being, you're someone that needs help with addiction and recovery, you need a coach, or you just want a friend to contact, reach out. I'll hold that space because I know what it's like. I've been at rock bottom before, and it took me going to that space of rock bottom in order for me to really transfer. So guys, <laughs> on that note, thanks for tuning in, embarking on a day five here in my quarantine, episode number four. Always remember to enjoy your life, you must tame your life. If you find these vlogs inspiring or you like listening to me and watching some of these, watching some of these videos, please make sure to subscribe, it makes a huge, makes a huge difference to me. It continues to motivate me to create content. Hit the little bell if you want the notifications. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode.